Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another RMA Fire tutorial. And today I want to show you guys how this is something you can do at displacement level on textures, but how to enhance the geometry to inherit the textures information on the diffuse and displace it. Then we can apply the texture to it and it's going to feel like instead of doing it at render time, we'll do it on the geometry, but this is helpful when we're dealing with simulations on the geometry and you want to have that information on the geometry. Um, so let's check it out, see what I'm talking about. So in Houdini, I'm just going to drop down a platonic, you know, any shape that we want to work with. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this an octagon. And the first thing is we want to have more detail here. We want to have a relatively dense mesh. So let's just turn it into a VDV. I'm going to do 0 0.01 and convert VDV to polygons. So now we have a good amount of geometry to play with. Then we need to UV this. So we're going to do a UV project or a UV texture. Let's see which one works a little better for us. So with a UV texture, we're going to do a UV quick shade. And I've got a texture that I've got for us of a metal corroded um, that I found here on um, bridge, right? So this can be any texture. And this is what we're getting with the texture, just the texture. Um, and we can play with the UVs to kind of figure out, you know, what kind of projection we want to have from it. And say, for example, we're happy with this projection. So now what I want to do is utilize the attribute from map to get this information onto our points. So we're just going to copy what we, the texture that we're using on the UV quick shade and paste it here. And this is what we are going to start with. Now, how do we go about displacing the geometry using this texture. Let's drop down an attribute Bob. And we are going to first displace the geometry using the normals. So we're going to do an add. We're going to need a multiply. And we're going to connect our position here. And we want to multiply our normals by, in this case, for example, a turbulence. So we grab our position, multiply it by this turbulence and add that to our initial position. And then we make sure that this is set to 3D and that is not working in this case. Let's see why. All right, let's connect our position first. So this is a, a displacement, but it's not based on the color and we want to have it done by the color. So we know that we already have the color in there and if we do an RS ramp, not an RS, but a ramp here and we grab our color and connect it here, we're going to get a black and white version of the texture. And this is helpful because we're going to be playing with these values here. And usually we have to play with that outside of ops. So for starters, let's see what happens if we add this instead of the turbulence. So we get something super crazy. Um, if we come out here and we change this to black. Then you can see that it is getting affected way less. Right? But if we 
again use the UV quick shade after that and we delete the color you will notice that the displacement is happening on some areas of the texture so let's come in here and let's figure out a way that we can control this a little better using a fit range we're gonna select the values that we want to clamp this by Right now my values are off the chart, so let's see if we can drop down an attribute bob before this, use the ramp to grab our color and I'll put again as our color here and we're getting, we're gonna see that our map part that is black does not get displaced and the part that is white is getting displaced and I'm not going to visualize it on our color here so that we can see it a little more clearly so what I'm doing is inputting the color right here so playing with the color that we get from the attribute for map and then controlling it with this ramp and then displacing it with this one right but right now it looks pretty wonky so let's see if we can tweak our settings here so right now the CD is a vector and let's see if we do vector to float and then float to vector nope gonna remove this all right so it was my my fit range that wasn't giving me the right result I mean, for one, I think that we're gonna need a little bit more info, more ge geometry to play with. And there we can really start to see it. A lot of times it's helpful to bring the image into Photoshop and just uh, control the same thing that I'm doing here. See, we reduce the amount something like that I 
All right, so what we're getting here is the attribute from map. Let's get ourselves a little bit more points to play with. We need the UV texture here so that the attribute from map will read it properly. UV texture, polar, and then the UV quick shade so that we can visualize what we're doing. All right, so that seems to be okay. Let's see the attribute from map. It is giving us the same result as the UV quick shade, but as a at points point level. And then this right here, this is basically making it black and white. So we input that color here and we export it again, but we control it, control the values, the black and white values here. So you you know that you know whatever's white is not is gonna get displaced and whatever's black will not get displaced so let's come in here and there it is working now um so we have this like pretty exaggerated result um but it's controlled by this ramp right um and we could do like other ways like the fit or even using a constant on the third input that we do like a point 0.1 or or point 0.2 and that is going that would be like our our driver so point 0.1 but the main input here is this black and white mat that we have that's controlling the intensity Okay, so maybe what we do is find a sweet spot, like a 0 0.01, where we have sort of like some nice amounts of displacement values in there. And then if we delete the color, you can see that this information is now at geometry level. And then we can basically just use our UV quick shade here. And if we middle mouse, you'll see that we just need to activate our UVs so that we can visualize it, right? So we have a pretty interesting displaced geometry now let me show you guys what happens when we go about like adding the textures to it and rendering it and then controlling that intensity it it's just obviously going to be a lot heavier and sometimes you, you can just get away with doing this with displacement but as like i said you run a sim or like something where you need collisions onto the geometry based on textures and this stuff is great all right, so let's go into our material, drop down on our standard material, then redshift material, come in here, and we're going to need the texture, and the texture I saved up on the Houdini file, so if we go to this corrode it, this is gonna be my albedo, we want to use the roughness that I have in there. So let's go ahead and attach our roughness. I want to use my AO. And this is going to be my AO. And then I'm not going to use a displacement. I'll just use a bump to enhance what we've already done. Um, so let's do an RS bump. Set that to 0.01, we don't need anything too hard. 
and come into our material and go ahead and apply it right here. Let's uh, have a look at where our camera is at. So this stuff is great for close-ups. We're gonna come really up close. Uh, sometimes when you have the UV quick shade on, uh, like on preview, um, I don't know why, but the ren the renders will not pick up my textures. So let's just go one node before that, so that we can load our textures. You can already see without the texture, we have actual geometry in there, and see. it obviously becomes a much more aggressive type of displacement and the bump can reduce a lot more even of a cool angle and then we can tweak the displacement mount which is obviously ultra high here and we can go back into here into our top and drop up and reduce this a little more on our constant Let's see what this gives us. So you can see that, you know, just a little bit will go a long way. What's cool about this is, you know, you've got this at material level now, so you can use that to emit particles from it, or you could also do some fun stuff with animating the gradient that we have in there to have it grow over time, or multiply this with a mask to have it grow, kind of similar to what you would do in texture level, but you get a whole other level of control. Now let's go ahead and just like, set up a proper camera here just like give this camera some like nice depth of field Let me 
just refresh the camera make this 1920 by 10 1080 get ourselves a cool cool angle Hit Z on your viewport and control the Z depth here. All right. And um, let's see what this is going to give us. Yeah, and this stuff already looks way more realistic with just like a little bit of C depth, right? All right, let's see what happens if we bring that displacement back a little bit. So we go back in here and let's set this to like a 0.5. Let's render again. We can definitely see that corrosion happening a lot more aggressively and realistic in some areas. So yeah, just like playing with the with the lights and finding a cool angle goes a really long way. All right, let's just have one more look at our material. So all that corrosion in there, you can really, really see see it pop. Um, and let's see, maybe we decrease our IOR a little bit. Come here into our color correction. Bring up 
our contrast a little down. And then lastly, if we wanted to make this a little bit more alien with a color correct, apply to our diffuse, we can kind of shift the hues here. And get something a little different. A little more alien. And yeah, this really opens up the door for a lot of interesting things. I hope you guys like this tip and I'll be back with more.